we have a very important speaker that I'm sure that you'll be, that you'll be wanting to hear. Uh, Saif ul Maluk has the distinction of having risked his life as the lawyer of Afia, Af, Asya Bibi. <laughs> I didn't know till a few minutes ago that he has another distinction as well. He came to the defense of Asya Bibi after he prosecuted Mumtaz Kadri, the killer of Salman Taseer. Is that, am I correct? Who was turned into a national hero in Pakistan and whom hundreds of thousands of people mobilized to defend. Few people were willing to step up and defend him. But Asma Jahangir, whom we sadly lost recently, the great human rights lawyer in Pakistan, uh, who has stood for secularism in Pakistan through its long and checkered and difficult history, uh, suggested to the Chief Justice that there was one man who would step up to the plate and do conduct this extremely dangerous prosecution. Saiful Maluk, we are very honored to have you here. Please come to the platform. Thank you very, very much for extending this honor. After doing these two cases, prosecuting Mumtaz Kadri in 2012, when none in Pakistan was coming forward to prosecute him, and thereafter defending Asya Bibi, a Christian woman who was sentenced to death on the allegation that she has uttered few sentences in derogation of the Muslim prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Everyone, particularly in the Christian world and generally in Pakistan, those who are liberals and those who understand the people have to stand for some good things always say me that you are very brave. But I must say that leaving Islam, abandoning to be a Muslim, according to the Quran, you are liable to be killed. So today I say the Maryam is much more brave than me, much more brave, and she needs a salute for me. <laughs> so I'll be introducing you the story of Asya Bibi, as everybody already knew. She was working in a field for a weekly wages of one pound sterling a week, a wages. You can imagine what was her status. Never gone to school even class one, can't write her name, and so is her husband. And at the time of taking meals, two Muslim girls, when Asya brought water for them to drink, they refused, saying that we'll not drink water from the hand of a Christian. And there, some hot words were exchanged between them. And these two Muslim girls who were studying Quran from the wife of the Imam of mosque of that village went to that Imam who called all the district Imams and after five days she was arrested and case was registered. Now in Pakistan to stand for a case of blasphemy it amounts as you are also committing a blasphemy in the eyes of lot many people. 
So no lawyer of a stature usually opts to come for these cases. Since I had already prosecuted Mumtaz Qadi, who is now the hero of this uh, Khadam San Rizvi and uh, new group of uh, Islamists in Pakistan. And so when Asia lost her fight in the first court and was sentenced to death, and then her appeal before the Lahore High Court, which was heard by two judges, also failed. Then I thought that I must come forward for this helpless lady. And I worked hard for four years, and I must salute to the judges of the Supreme Court of Pakistan. Why I salute? Reason. The appeal was heard on 8th of October, and judgment was reserved. Right after 8, these mullahs hold public processions throughout the country and saying on television, saying on print media, electronic media, that if judges allow the appeal of Asia, will kill the judges of the Supreme Court. And I never heard in my 63 years of age and my 38 years of practice anywhere around the world, that any group of people coming with such a demand that they'll kill the highest constitutional court's judges if the verdict does not come according to their vision. <clears throat> and after that, giving this judgment, and I was addressing the European Parliament last week, and there I said on record that had Justice Asif Said Khosa not been in the bench, the result of the appeal must have been different. And this I also told when I was arguing the appeal, although I got the annoyance of the Chief Justice who was heading the bench, when I said that I'm lucky that Justice Asaf Said Khosa, who's professor on the criminal law and one of the finest judge in indo Park, he's in the bench. So, <clears throat> Now, whole the Western world, and particularly the Christian world, is very happy on our lease. And as far as the Mariam's this slogan, the one law for all, I think this is a wonderful, this is everybody should support. And as far as the secularism is concerned, I must state, that Article 25 of the Constitution of Pakistan clearly says equality among citizens. It says no one shall be discriminated on the basis of religion, creed, cause, or color. So it almost supports the same idea which Mariam is uh, arguing. So, and lastly, I would say that uh, it is a group of people in Pakistan. It is not Pakistan. It is a very, very small group of people. I had been born in a village where there was a church. I still remember as a small young boy, my father, my mother, we used to go to church on all the function and eat with them. They come to my house. Now I have many Christian friends in Pakistan. They come to our house, we eat together, we go to their function, they come to our function. These few mullahs, and all this started after 1980, when this 295B, defiling the Quran, was introduced with a punishment of life imprisonment. And then 1985, the general Ziaul Haq, who had no constituency and wanted to take Mullah as his strength. Prior to Ziaul Haq, every newspaper of Pakistan, I exactly remember, you can see from the newspaper research, on front page on the newspaper would be that Imam of a mosque, while committing sodomy with one of the boy, is arrested. 
such news is used to be every day in the newspaper. It only changed when General Ziaul Haq took over and took the mullah, strengthened them with the help of the Americans, particularly when they needed these mullahs for the Afghan war to fight against the Russia. So I'll be ending that uh, everywhere in the world, there should be some people who must stand when the nation needs, they must stand when none is standing. And I'm proud of my this standing to prosecute the Mumtaz Qadri and defending the Asya Bibi, and I have no regret. The respect you people have tendered today to me, it is a full, I'm, I'm so happy, I've forgotten everything, and uh, I'm proud of all everything. So thank you very much. So at the end, I offer myself to Maryam if she thinks I'm of any help to this organization. I'm ready to work with her wherever, in whichever field she thinks I can be appropriate. I'm a volunteer for her. And thank you very much.